Hello everybody and welcome back to Dangerous Minds. I just wanted to do a short prelude to this video to thank everybody for your incredible response. I had no idea so many people would like my videos and I just want to thank you all. My name is Kevin Kobach. I'm with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. We're assisting the Frederick Police Department with this case involving uh, Chris Watts. Sir, if you just introduce yourself. Uh, Dwayne Kessinger. I'm Nicole's father. And Nicole, can you just introduce yourself for the recording? Nicole Kessinger. Can you speak up just a little bit so the recorder, I know you're tired and you're stressed. You came here on your own free will to talk to us. We picked you up at, at your request and brought you here. But we're here to understand uh, your relationship with Chris. The phone number that you reached him on, can you tell me what that number was? I think I deleted that out of my phone, too. I just, like, cut him out of my life. No, we gave it to Mark yesterday. Yeah. Let's just start with, like, a timeline of your um, getting to know Chris, how you guys met, where you met, all those things. Let's just run. And I, I'm not going to ask you specific questions unless I think it's necessary. I'll let you just tell me your story. So I just want to know how you met him, where you met him, how long you guys were dating, uh, and those kind of things. I think I met him sometime in June, probably early June. It might have been May. It was just talking at work. It was pretty casual. Um, and uh, he didn't have a wedding ring on his face. And then one day he told me that he had two kids. I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, started telling me about his kids. That sounded like a sarcastic comment. No, I thought it was kind of cute. I was like, oh, he's a dad. He's telling me about him, he's pretty excited about him, and then uh, he mentioned that he did have a significant other, and then he told me that those two were in the process of a separation. Did he mention the children's name or his significant other's name? Um, I didn't know his significant other's name for a while. I think he told me his kids' names pretty quick, but to be honest with you, on an exact date of when that happened, I don't know. First of all, where do you work? I work at Andarco Petroleum Corporation. I'm contract. And Chris also works out of that location, per yes. se. But he comes into the office frequent. In or... the mornings. His team meets in the mornings. And is that where you met Chris? Yes. Okay. Take us through kind of a little bit of uh, the early part of how you guys, how he courted you or you courted him. Know which one happened? Um, I guess we just started talking. He actually... Um, so part of my job is to manage the gas monitors that we have. And I'd seen him before, him, but I didn't ever, like, talk to him. Um, so that day we just started talking, and then every time I saw him in the hallway after that, we just kind of had a lot in common. One day he just, he, he told me that he had kids and started talking about his kids and then mentioned, yes, that I have a wife, but we're getting separate. Was that within the first couple of weeks that you knew him, or... Was that later on? You said you met him around May or June. Yeah, it was still in June. Okay. It would have been before Father's Day. So had you guys ever gone out? We went to went to a park. So he took. Why did he tell you that he was getting a divorce? Did he ask you out at that time? No, he didn't. I think he was probably interested in me, and so um, he talked to me a couple times uh, via his work phone, and I was like. Uh, no. Like, it was still very, like, friendly conversation. But then when I realized, like, this man is interested in me, I'm interested in him, this is personal. So we got away from the Anadarko thing because I really don't want those guys affiliated with any of And So you have a work phone that he, specifically... No. I have one phone that I do both. He has two phones. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you know what his Anadarko phone number nope. was? It's been so long, and it, I mean, I'm sure I could, like, look it up, but I tried to look it up for those guys yesterday, and I couldn't find it. But at that point, we just, like, took it to his phone because I just felt it was, like, better. The time frame. I, yeah, or, like, the beginning of July. It was, like, right around my birthday. It's, like, so sometime at the very end of June or the beginning of July. Okay. And that's the first meeting you had outside of work? Yeah. Basic conversation for a first date? I mean, we kept it pretty simple, I guess. You know, um, I don't even remember everything we talked about. We sure. were there for a few hours. So if, if I ask about conversation, what I'm looking for, was he talking about his family? I understand, uh, every, you know, whatever you guys were talking about, relationship, your life, your interests, those things, that we don't need to know that. We know, unfortunately, that you're in a situation where somebody has murdered Nicole. He ever made any kind of statements that you were like, whoa, that was weird. 
um, or why would he say that, or why did he? Do you understand what I'm? I'm no, I for? completely understand. I just feel like some of this happened so long ago that I can't tell you like the exact words of the exact conversation at the exact time and place because it's like we had a lot of conversations i mean we talked every single day so it's so like i'm trying to help you guys with the stuff like the stuff that's more current i can give you guys a lot more like detail and exact times but when you're asking me about something that happened six weeks ago and exactly what was said it's like i mean i'm sure i can give you a general idea but to be honest with you like to pinpoint exact words it's not gonna happen i'm not Looking for exactly No, I mean, everything we did was, like, text and talk, pretty much. I mean, and like I said, any pictures that I had, like, even if you were to restore all my regular photos, there's so many pictures in there, and you wouldn't even know which ones were for him and which ones weren't. Uh, let's say six weeks ago he said something that triggered with you last night. Um, that's what I'd be looking for. Or something four weeks ago. And if you don't remember where it was or... The specific words, that doesn't matter. Just he said something that was, you know, wow, I wonder why he said that. Now knowing what you know today. Do you understand where, where I'm going with that? I completely understand. And to be honest with you, I mean, there were several discussions that we had about his current relationship and where it had gone and what it had caused. Like even when he spoke of his wife and the fact that they were separating, it was never like ill, ill. I still look back at that, and I don't see any red lights with the way that he spoke of his family. Can you just describe his dem overall demeanor over the 8, 10, 12 weeks that you guys knew each other? It wasn't that long. It was like six weeks. But was he aggressive? Was he mellow? Was he calm? Was he outspoken? What, who was Chris? He, I, you know, I think he's an introvert. I would consider him to be like a pretty... I don't want to say he's a very reserved individual. I think he's probably more reserved around other people. I think he emphasized to me that one of the reasons that he really enjoyed talking to me is because if he felt like he could get out of his shell. With me, it made him feel like he could really just start talking about things that excited him. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that we had things in common. Um... So, with me, I think he was a little bit more outgoing, but even then, I would still consider him to be an introvert. I mean, not on the extreme end. If an introvert went to, like, 1 to 10, I'd put him at, like, a 4. So, on the lighter side of introvert. Pretty even too. Yes, like, really relaxed, like, all the time. He was never really, like, worked up about anything. Just mellow, chill, easygoing guy. Very much. So, you never saw him upset or mad? No. And there was a couple times that we had some disagreements on things that, as we, like, further progress into this story, you know, but it was never, like, I am very calm when I talk to people. It's, like, extremely rational when I handle situations that there's a disagreement in. I think one thing that actually kind of drew me to him was the fact that he was, like, very open with communicating. With so can we just kind of go back to your relationship? You say you guys have a lot in common. Oh, I mean, like, we're both really into fitness. I think that's important. It's a lifestyle. Um, both of us ate pretty healthy, so I think that was important as well. Um, he's, like, a total gearhead. He likes cars a lot, and I don't know nearly as much about them, but it's always been something that I've been pretty interested in, so we definitely talk about stuff. Um, and I, I guess he was always willing to, like, learn new stuff, and vice versa. Like, I like to travel a lot. It's not something that he's done a lot, but he seemed, like, really interested in what I had to share with him and vice versa. So even if it wasn't something that we originally had in common together, it was just like, hey, I respect what you have to say, and vice versa. So you guys, just yin and yang. Did you guys spend most of the time at your place? Always. Okay, always at your place. I told, well, or we'd go out, yeah. but... Um, I told Mark yesterday, he asked me if I went over there, and I told him about one time that I went over to that house. I've been to that house twice, but it was very, very brief, and it was not, like, an extended stay. I did not feel comfortable there, or, like, I just didn't want to be there. It's not my life. Like, that is somebody else's life and somebody else's existence, and I respect that. That's their space. And so I used to tell him, well, come to my house because this is, like, this is our space. This is my space. And so, for me, out of respect just for, like, whatever situation he had going on and the fact that it's not my home, um, I felt that it was better to, to be in my place. And I, I live alone. I don't have any roommates or anything, so it's pretty easy to do that. Did you meet his children? No. 
I didn't want to. You can't introduce kids to somebody new in a situation like that. That's something that takes time. I mean, would I have liked to have met them? Of course. They, you know, I mean, that would have been a, a great honor for me to have somebody introduce their children into my life, you know, and, and, but not then. It was something that it was like, okay, well, let's see where we're at in six months. Let's see where we're at in a year. And if we're still doing this and you and me are still, you know, happy with where we're at and you think that this is something that is going to be long term and is worth bringing children into the picture then yes I would love to meet them but it's like not right now you are still in this situation where you're, you're not even completely out of it and I'm getting in it and that's not fair for them and that was kind of the policy that I had with him was it was just like yes but not yet